I'm, I'm representing grafiska företagen who organizes about 80% of the turnover in uh, the graphic industri industry in Sweden. We do various kinds of analysis and so on, uh, describing the situation in the uh, graphic, uh, uh, graphic industry. So I'm going to share with you our most recent analysis of um, uh, the graphic industry in Sweden. And what we're going to look at is how is the graphic industry over time compared to some other, in, uh, some other sectors of the Swedish industry? Also looking a little bit more closely at the value chain, some parts of the value chain in the graphic industry, how, uh, what segments are really performing well, what, what uh, has more difficulties. Then we will zoom in more specifically on various segments in the, in the graphic sector. And finally, let's have a look at who are the really best performing companies over time in our industry. So that's the, the long and short of uh, my presentation. So what we have done, together with the research firm uh, Biznode, we have analyzed some close to 2,000 companies in the graphic value chain over a number of years. We did, we did a recent study, uh, or we did a study covering the years 2008 to 2014, and we'll have a look at some comparisons and see what has happened during these two uh, time periods. You see that there is some overlap, uh, 2000, 2012, and that is because uh, we want to have a longer series of time uh, to really show uh, the big trends. Uh, the reason why 2018 is, isn't there is that a lot of companies haven't filed their annual reports for 2018 yet. But for those who have, we have checked that as well, and it doesn't really change what I'm going to share with you today. We are also, we're comparing this with how all Swedish businesses is doing, our relative competitiveness. We're specifically looking at the engineering industry because that's the backbone of Swedish industry and also the food sector, which is a stable, very domestic, not so sensitive um, industry uh, when it comes to the, the conjunkturcykel. Well, you've figured that one out. Uh, we're using a method called the simpler method, and thereby you, you uh, look how effectively companies are using uh, capital and human resources in order to create the added value. And basically, you do that so you can compare very capital-intense companies with uh, also very people-intense companies. And you get a classic four field where you understand you want to be in the upper right position rather than in the uh, lower left position. Um, on the vertical axis, you have um, the profitability index, and on the um, horizontal axis, you have how much added value you have created during the period, or rather, how, uh, or if you have declined in added value. So, just uh, let's have a, a look at some basics, how the graphic industry is, is compared to some other parts of, this, of uh, the industry. And as you can see, um, the graphic industry has shrunk in added value, but is performing relatively well in terms of profitability. Uh, the flag that you see, that's the sum of all Swedish businesses. So if you are on the line, you have average, your, your, your competitive is as average as the sum of all Swedish uh, companies. And you can see that um, the engineering industry has performed very well during this period. And you also see that um, the food sector is um, doing quite well. And where the main difference is, how is the graphic industry competitive? Well, that is mainly by reducing number of employees. As you can see, uh, during this period, 12 to 17, uh, we reduced about one-fifth of, um, of employees in the, in the sector, and thereby remaining profitability. Okay, just um, let's then have a look at the little bit more of the graphic value chain. And in the interest of time, I'll just take a couple of, um, of uh, measurements. Uh, if you feel that prices, raw material prices, 
has increased a lot. Uh, you're absolutely right. You can see that the, the profitability of the paper manufacturers, they haven't grown so much in added value, uh, but their, prof their relative profitability has increased quite a bit. So the feeling that you have is absolutely right in that respect. Um, also, you see advertising agencies, which is a part of the value chain, uh, booming Swedish business means also that they are has grown a lot, and they're also making a fair bit uh, a fair bit of money. Let's just have a quick look at how this compares to the previous period when we measured 2018, uh, 2008 to 2014, and see what has happened between these two uh, time lags. And the blue dots are representing the previous period. And as you see, the graphic industry is still, let's say, competitive but in negative growth, whereas uh, um, paper manufacturers have been really good at sh shutting down capacity and thereby uh, increasing prices. And advertising agencies have really been growing both in terms of added value and, and uh, in, in profitability. Whereas, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, stay with that. Okay, so that's part of a little bit how we're doing in the big picture, a little bit about the value chain. Um, and now let's go a little bit deeper into uh, the different segments of the graphic sector. Uh, and I'll just share with you, we've done this also on packaging companies, but we'll, in the interest of time again, we'll just have a look at, let's say, um, what maybe is more relevant here today. And again, what we're looking at is this, where, where do these, the different segments of repaired, where do they, uh, where are they? In the lower left or upper right, or uh, let's have a look at that. And if we, I'm introducing a term here, fin papper tryckeria, that's commercial printers, uh, your typical civil grafiska tryckeria, uh, offset based uh, very many times, but also with the digital uh, printing. And what you see is that um, bookbinders have average profitability, a bit of negative growth. Um, the commercial printers, doing pretty good, but negative growth. Uh, those who are really struggling, that's, uh, of course, newspaper printers and magazine printers, they don't even fit into the diagram, uh, so that's quite tough. Is there anything in the green, on the green side? I mean, that's really what we want to know, isn't it? I know, because I can see it on my screen. And yes, there are. <clears throat> what you see again, uh, advertising agency, media bureaus and so on, really, really uh, doing well dur during this period. Uh, special trick, that means uh, display printer, printers, um, textile printing, industrial printing, those kind of companies are also doing very well. And you can see that brokers uh, growing at good profitability, uh, also, store, um, large format uh, printers are uh, on the growing side during this period. Oh, and here's just the complete picture. Uh, let's then look at um, what is, again, also here, what has happened since the, the, the former period, 2008 to 14, compared to 12, 17. The blue dots representing the former period we measured. And as you can see, uh, commercial printers and book binders have increased their relative profit, profitability. Um, whereas pre-press, pretty tough, uh, has gone from a somewhat better position, but are, are struggling. 
And then on, when we look at um, the upper side, you can see that, that um, brokers and um, uh, let's say specialty printers from an already very strong position, they have further strengthened their position uh, during this second period. Uh, large format printing still growing, but not, uh, not at the same speed, being a bit more mature in, in that sense. A lot of printers are, have, during this period, entered into this segment, and also meaning that taking down profitability a bit, but uh, still growing. Uh, brokers uh, not growing at the same speed, but have increased profitability over this time. And again, uh, you don't want me to show, uh, and I'm not going to do that, newspapers and, and uh, magazine uh, printers are, don't fit into this type of diagram. Can I ask now, a question? Yeah. How, how did you handle companies that offer many of those uh, things? Uh, then we have uh, put them at uh, where the majority of their business is. So, of course, uh, good question, Ola. Uh, you cannot fit all companies into, I mean, since many companies are, di are quite diverse, specifically when it comes to, to large format uh, print, since most printers will print uh, large format. And then we have made a, a selection, really uh, decided where, where do they fit uh, the most. Now, does this mean that... Um, I mean, we are seeing a picture with some of the growth, but also uh, some segments that are declining. Uh, and of course, these uh, dots do, don't represent um, size. Uh, the, the, the commercial printers, the fin papier that's of course the, the bulk of the graphic, uh, of the business in the graphic industry. And that's a bit on the declining side. Does that mean that everything is bleak and dark and so on? Of course not, because all types of situations create opportunities. And there are a lot of growth opportunities in mature or declining markets. And, and um, typically what you do, you either buy market share, you, you consolidate, you buy assets and so on. And the next picture I'm gonna show you is not a profitability, um, profitability uh, picture, but it shows you on the vertical axis um, how the number of employees has changed in our largest, with our largest printers combined with their, their if, what type of added value they have created. So it's not a profitability slide. Just have that in remembrance. And um, of course you can see that our biggest printers uh, are ac acting exactly like you, you should do in, in this type of markets. Acquire market share, acquire assets, consolidate uh, and grow. So you have on the vertical axis, you have the growth in number of employees. That has been done mainly through acquisitions and you see uh, exact on the very far right that has really, really um, increased both number of employees and, and um, uh, added value. You can also choose a totally different path, which uh, Elanders have been doing, uh, partly sort of exiting this type of the business or repositioning themselves. And again, this is not a profitability slide. It just shows how our biggest printers have been acting during this period of time. And it's strictly logic. There are always business opportunities. Okay, then let's have a look of the cliffhanger. What are the most or the best performing companies in the graphic industry, in the printing industry in Sweden? Will they be from the same type of segments? Because we saw that some of the segments are growing, at large format brokers, uh, etc., and, uh, and uh, some segments are, are in uh, quite some decline. So <clears throat> we're going to look at the top 10 best performing companies. Uh, what we did is that we looked 
The defining factor was the operating margin. Looking at the operating margin over all these years, 2012 to 2017. Uh, we put some requirements. They should have had growth, more than 10 employees, and also they should exist during the whole period. Uh, since there are acquisitions going on and so on, uh, so if you, haven't, if you haven't existed or you're being acquired by some other company, you typically don't get into the list. Um, but these were the cr criteria, and uh, let's have a look then at um, the 10 best performing companies. They are listed in, in um, alphabetical order, so there's no, uh, no other um, um, they are listed in alphabetical order, that's it. So, so let's have a look. These are our top performers seen over time. These are, by all means, if you compare them to other industries, other segments, um, other type of sectors, these are extremely well-performing companies. Um, <clears throat> And as you can see, if you recognize them, they are, we have some pre-press companies, we have specialty um, printers, we have normal uh, commercial printers in here. So uh, really this is not a game of um, uh, what assets you have, but there are uh, other explanations. And then of course, one wonders if this is this period of time, the last six years. How many of these companies were also in the top performing list uh, in the previous period? It's, it's not all of them, but for, for sure. Could I have a guess? How many of these 10? Helften, 50%. Uh, almost right. These, so six out of 10 uh, were also the best performing companies in our industry in the previous period. So over a period of 10 years time, uh, these are companies that have been performing extremely well. Great companies tend to be great over time as well. And uh, I've met a number of these uh, companies, and I, I can assure you from my point of view, it's not about assets. It's not about um, having a real specific customer base that nobody else can access. But it's really a question of the people, the management, and the fundamental belief that the value that we provide to our customer is equal or higher than the price we charge. When we have the right uh, to charge a price according to the value that we create for our customers. Some of these companies are here today, and I would um, advise you, since this is a networking thing, this is why we're here, discuss, let's share some thoughts, your views, what are their views, what are, how are they thinking about business, and so on. Uh, so this is um, really, really uh, fantastic when you analyze a lot of companies and you see that uh, it's absolutely nothing uh, in, in, the, in the assets, the machines, or so. It's all here. That's how you perform. So these were some insights um, in, into how the um, Swedish market is doing. Um, if you have questions and so on, but, and we have further analysis um, that, that we can discuss, but um, I hope this gives you some thoughts <coughs> because this is what we do, we give food for thoughts. So hopefully you can get inspired or think a little bit about what do you want to do with your own company um, when you reflect a little bit around these things. So thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>